Benji, look at my life. I'm a lot like you were. Benji, look at my life. I'm a lot like you were. All right, so uh, let's get it started here. I can edit this all later, which I'm going to do a very piss poor job of editing, so just so you're aware which of is that. Sincerely, too bad because about 90% of what we say is shit. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know, which means a very little editing if all I do is pick out the good stuff. Yep. We just got to mark the good stuff. <laughs> All right. We'll need like three pins. <laughs> we'll be okay. <laughs> I'm not starting this very well. Okay. We're going to get started. This is a Good Guys podcast. Uh, probably the first one we've done in months. Months, I think it's been. So, uh, but, but Good Guys podcast number whatever it might be. Let's call it Good Guys podcast number one of um, September 18th, 2019 anyway. That's a good point. Is that good? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go all right, so a lot to get to tonight, actually, uh, and we're coming to you from uh, live, actually. Well, right now it's live. If you listen to it later, it's taped, but right now it's live. Um, from the, the front porch area, uh, we got a nice-looking little hazy sunset in the distance, kind of an orange glow on the horizon. Um, I'll take a picture and post it up. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. There's bats flying around, and we talked about that a little bit before we hit the button, um, but a lot to get to tonight anyway, so we're going to move right on into it. Um, it's September, and, and you know what September is for, uh, for the Good Guys franchise. It means... Time for say it teachers me. cry. Te- okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, too. It means JV doesn't stay out as late after games now. Um, and he, he, he cries more. Historically, we were playing doubleheaders by now. <laughs> you know, if that was a thing. Um, but, yeah, so September means for other people... Good Guys Hall of Fame voting. That's right, because October is the month of Good Guys Party, postseason party, typically, uh, which we typically will induce, uh, induce, introduce, induct. Induct. That's the word, I word. Conduct. Conduct. Induct a new Hall of Famer to the Good Guys Hall of Fame, the prestigious Hall of Fame that is actually a hall. The Good Guys Hall, which is, in fact, a hall. Yes, absolutely true. Can you name all the Good Guys Hall of Famers today? Um, what do I get if I do? Um, Can I have this beer? you that beer, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so, Sue. Yes. Mike. Correct. Danny. Mm-hmm. Serge. Yes. A yellow bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That was my favorite. Nick Kelly. Nick Kelly, you Correct. came after the yellow bat. <laughs> yes, it's true. You're missing three by my count. Go ahead. Damn, am I really? Yes. Uh, shoot. Okay, um... Two of them were last year. The first class ever to have two inductees in one class. The yellow bat and the orange bat? No, that was two years ago. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, okay, that's gonna... Damn, Jeremy. The last year's inductees? You don't remember these guys? I... They were plastered all over the walls of the party. You were at the party, but you were also plastered all over the walls. <laughs> yeah, I was also... The walls weren't <laughs> the only thing that was plastered. Um... Somebody didn't show up and we called That's correct. Yep, and he didn't answer, so. Right. That's why I don't remember, because he didn't answer. Okay, well, he pitched for us for a number of years. I don't know how you can... Frank? Yeah. Oh, okay, Frank. He's in the Hall of Fame That's right, yes, Frank. Yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. So we got two more. Another, okay, um, Uh, one of these good guys started with the team in 2005. The other one, I think, didn't start until 2006. All right, so that's that's almost baseball days. Oh, yeah, it's post-baseball, but first-year softball. Yeah, this is disappointing. Okay, okay. Chad Sweetwater Rose. Oh, duh, Chad. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely sorry, Chad. Okay, I should have said uh, you chased him a lot in the walks race historically Barney. until you just took him over. Yeah. No, 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 Barney, not there yet. But <laughs> hey, who's to say he's got a good strong record on him now? And the last one, I think it's um, not Jacob is it? That's Jacob. Oh, yeah, it is Jacob. Okay, yeah, all right, oh, good. I keep thinking he like plays every now and then. No, he hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> even even when he did. <laughs> Well, he did. Sometimes he didn't, and uh, yeah. So to Chad, I apologize. So, man. so great memories of all of those guys. And you think of those those people, you think you know, classic good guys. They are, are a piece of the franchise that couldn't be forgotten. So we had to immortalize them in the Hall except, of Fame, except which for is, possibly Chad. Well, there's that. Could, you know, Chad, you forgot. forgot him, yeah. literally. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so we come to uh, September, and what we do is we go to the Good Guys Hall of Fame committee. Yes, there is a committee, and. Uh, 
we, we bring about the next list of names who are eligible for the Hall of Fame. So first off, the committee, and I won't name their names, but it is a prestigious group of guys uh, who have all spent at minimum eight years within the Good Guys franchise. Eight years. And Baseball Writers of America, correct? And at least some of the Baseball Writers of America, exactly. yes, which they don't all participate, and that's fine. They all got this um, never vote for them the first time they're on the ballot thing going on, but that's fine. So so they're well, all on and here. And there's the, uh, the steroid controversy with Adam Caston, too. Well, so. we will get to that, <laughs> let me tell you. All right, so... Um, so anyway, so this year um, we've, we've presented the list of uh, guys for, that were eligible for it, and, um, which, by the way, the eligibility um, is that you played for at least, I don't know, a few seasons with the good guys. I think the minimum ABs is like 75 or something if you've had uh, 75 plate appearances or something like that. I don't know if that's even the thing. Um, and then that you've been out of the game for two years. Um, that doesn't count. If you come fill in for a game or something, whatever. I'm not going to count that. See, that's where I think of Jacob. But yeah. well, maybe. Um, so anyway, we've gotten a, we've gotten our list of people for this year, and I will read them to you now. And I'm going to start with uh, three guys who were actually on the ballot last year. Um, first one here, uh, Adam Caston, and you mentioned this this name a little bit earlier. Adam Caston. This is his third year on the ballot um, actually we allow people to be on the ballot three years before we remove them or if they have not received a single vote they will also be removed from the ballot so just to, to throw that in there also but, but they can be later on brought up by the um, the old time commission right mm, the veterans mm. commission they can come back oh yeah absolutely okay just, yeah, make, just making sure so so whatever happens adam this is, may not be your last. This may chance. not be it. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we change the rules constantly, so don't don't forget that. Plus, we ignore them pretty yeah, frequently. Just, yeah. I don't even know if there are rules. All right. So, Adams, this is his third time on the ballot. Um, actually, just missed out his first year. Just missed out on election. And is then he, last year. Is he allowed year, to know that? Well, I've been telling him right now. If he okay. listens, Adam doesn't listen to this stuff. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if he does, Adam, we do miss you, and I love you, man. I, I actually do miss having him around. This is uh, Adam Caston was always. Uh, uh, he, he patrolled right center field for a number of years there and uh, did an excellent job on it. The dude had, he was long and lanky and could get catch up to a ball like nobody else. Um, he could catch a fly ball, which was amazing to, to everybody, really, that uh, we had outfielders that could catch fly balls. It was really something. And he had a cannon on him, too. Um, yeah, he's going to always be forever be known as the guy who almost killed Garrett Forsyth, and we always are going to keep that in mind as well. But there's more to him than just that. Um, Which, his, our opinion of that, though, may change depending on our opinion of Garrett. If we start liking Garrett Well, West, that's true, yeah. Adam, your stock could rise. Yeah, that's very true. Some people, some of the voters might not really have a fond memory of Fausto. And uh, so the fact that he was nearly, um, um, that Adam Decapitated nearly, his work, nearly right? made a canoe out of his head is what I was thinking. Yeah, that could be a lot of things for people. He had 161 career hits, Adam Caston did. That's, that I, puts him at 13th all-time on the good guys list, which is a lot. There's probably, I don't know, I have to look it up again, but I want to say like 60 different people that we've actually kept a stat track of in good guys history, meaning they've played a significant number of games. He's number 13. Um, 121 runs. He's, uh, si he's 12th all-time in that. So, I mean, he was a, he was a good good guy for a while and a good player at that. So uh, there's, there's one of them. So Adam Caston. Hall of Fame eligibility for the third time now. Your thoughts on Adam? Do you want to do? You need to share some of these, or I'm okay. I'm. I'm you don't have to share your vote if you don't want to. You're welcome to, but uh, just get some of your general thoughts on Adam. Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna for the listening audience here. Um, Joe and I are sitting here. There's also next to me here a, a gentleman from Price Waterhouse who's gonna redact anything I say mm -hmm. that could be um, giving away the. Uh, the results and therefore, you know, taking away our ratings on Good Guys Party Night. So, um, just letting you know about that. So, when it comes to Adam, I think the number one thing that makes me want to is because he was, and which is why I had to vote. And I think when you think about that, it's it's pretty clear that that's. Uh, oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense to me anyway when you explain it that way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and if Adam were here, I think he'd agree. Especially when you're covering the, and the, and the. And that's the way it goes with that, you know. Every time, it's, it's self-explanatory, really. And, and a lord, an order of large fries to go. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, All right. All right. So, so, so Adam Caston. So again, weigh in if you're listening to this for some reason. 
must be really damn bored. But weigh in and tell us your thoughts. Uh, comment there on the posting and let us know. Next, next name up on the ballot. Um, also uh, on the ballot for the third time. Uh, he, he came into the game playing catcher. He played some left field for us. Um, he threatened to take his pants off a number of times. Uh, Danimal Detweiler. This is, okay, Danimal, and, and I know you know what I'm saying here, Danimal. You are the first person in the my, history of my um, involvement in sports on any level, as a player, as a coach, as a fan. You are the first person to make a cogent, decent argument for the inclusion of mind-altering substances <laughs> in the field of play. Because, I don't know, what was that Pirates pitcher that one time was supposed to have pitched on acid? Oh, I yeah. Can't remember, yeah. I don't remember. Doc somebody. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, Danimal, if you remember that the one time you had dental surgery and you showed your ass up and had the best game out of your life, one might even say you played out of your mind. I believe you were fundamentally out of your mind at that point in time. <laughs> and, like... If, if you had a prescription that went on for years, I believe you'd have been a Hall of Fame first vote. Um, <laughs> as it is, we're still pulling for you. I think, uh, you know, another thing, and this is a good comparison, in comparison to another Hall of Famer, uh, but when he would run around the bases, you'd look at him and think, come yeah. on, man, run, because he looked like he never really sprinted at full speed. <coughs> but in reality, he was really fast. Yeah. He was he was taking strides like... Uh, like uh, what would normally be two or three steps for one person, it'd be like one stride for him. So he had this really gazelle-like uh, physique about him, the way he would sprint around the bases. It was really something. Yeah, he, he could cover outfield grass like that too. It, he didn't always uh, bode well when he got where he was going. But uh, I was gonna that oh, okay. So actually one of my other favorite things about Danimal is uh, the fact that he could be um, very upset and angry with somebody, but the way he would talk, it would still be just like conversational. Oh, yeah. So you go, hey man, how's it going? Oh, it's going not so bad. I'm about to go punch that guy's fucking head and yeah. you know snap off his his leg, you know, or something. But uh, but you know that's just the way he was, and I gotta appreciate that about a guy. He had a real comforting sense of about a, of, about of conversation about him, even though it was very. Uh, aggressive at the same time, so it was really kind, something. That, kind of like Robert De Niro in The Untouchables. Yeah, a little that bit. That scene yeah. with the baseball bat, and he's going to part of a team, and without breaking a sweat, he just pounds the shit out of the guy's head, and then he just goes on with his dinner. It's kind of like that. <laughs> so we talked about Adam Cassin, 161 hits, 13th all time on the list. Danimal comes in at, at 14th, so you know he's there with uh, at 14th with, and I'll say this as well, and not to take anything away from Adam Cassin. But he's uh, he's 14th, and he also had about 130 at, at bats less than Adam Caston. So 130, 130 less wow. plate appearances. That is sorry. Um, so anyway, uh, all over the field, human highlight reel. Um, and I don't believe he actually did take his pants off, though. We'll have wow. to check that. We'll have to check that. We not, have not we have video. on the field. We not have video. on the field. All right, next one here, uh, Anthony Scooter Gilbert. Um, good guy from uh, 2012 to 2017. Uh, so kind of an impressive, uh, be a six-year span, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Six-year span. Um, coming in at, with plate appearances, 11th all-time, 10th in doubles, 6th in triples, 8th with home runs, um, and 11th with hits at uh, 193 career hits. So he's a career 503 batter. Um, 7 719 slugging which was good for 6th all time. So well, there's some decent I, numbers I just, here. I just like to state that at no point in time did you say how many walks he had. You know, I didn't I didn't actually you know we have to check on that. Well, I, I think the yeah, the reason's obvious. Oh. Scooter did all this like hitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, that stuff's stupid, man. <laughs> but I'm just saying Scooter, you you're not, you know, you're you're not playing to my strengths. But anyways. So oh yeah, by the way, sorry, before I start on this Scooter's first time on the ballot also. He's not been on right. the ballot yet, first time on the ballot. Um, so I, I, when I think of Scooter, I think of the 2013-2014 good guys that were so dominant. Um, and Scooter right next to, and, and we'll get the next guy on the list here, but Scooter right next to this other person, 1-2 in the lineup, um, just set the tone every game it seemed like. The top of the order come up, boom, boom, two hits, and, and we got two guys on base or even a run on the board at that point and setting the tone early. 
Um, we even had some ducks on the pond. We had ducks on the pond back then. Yeah. So it's, it was really something. So um, played a little bit of outfield, played uh, some rarely played some infield, but mostly outfield. Um, decent arm, decent glove. Uh, so, so serviceable with both those, but I think mostly of his hitting and his uh, authority, he could put the ball to the right side of the field with with uh, with regularity, even. So, a good good ball player, good number of years there. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking Scooter's got. Um, he, he he makes an argument with his numbers there. I think sure. he's got uh, he's got a lot to offer. I feel I feel one like thing that's a little on the dark side is Scooter's kind of fallen off the radar. I would like to know like where he is and what he's doing. We haven't heard from him for a while. I, so I know he's a cop now, yeah, which yeah, is a, a thing. I didn't know that. I, one interesting story. Um, I heard on the news, and this is going back like eight or ten months ago, but I heard on the news that uh, they had picked some kid up at a party, and they had him like in cuffs behind his back, and uh, he was, they were checking him out for medical reasons, and this kid like dislocates his shoulder and pops out a socket, and he pulls his hands in front of them and hits the cops. And before they finally subdue him and tackle him and everything else. And they release the body cam video. And they show this. And this guy's like, pops a shoulder out. So it's very, very strange. That was Scooter's body cam. On really? The video. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really interesting. And I'm like, I'm Facebook friends with that guy. And I was telling <laughs> everybody, man. Oh, I was showing it off. Scooter, we do miss you, man. And, and, and you know, you're welcome to come back with the good guys at any point. All these guys are. You know, all these guys are welcome here. This is a very, very strong class. Good it guys, is. Hall of Fame class. So because I think Danimal would have a little bit of travel, but I mean, I well, he know. might, he might. But you know what? Bring him in. We'll fly oh, him absolutely. in. If he shows up, I'm more planning him. Yeah. So speaking of travel, uh, the the next person on the ballot pairs nicely with Scooter, and that's Ryan. Say it to my face, Fisher. He also pairs nicely with a good Chardonnay. He but does. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually say it to my face, Fisher's second time on the ballot. Um, he came up just short last year. Oh, but, dude, uh, that's so not cool. Well, it, it is not cool. Is that a height joke? Ah. Oh, okay, it is. Well, his hair never comes up short, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you exactly that. exactly right. Um, so just running through some of the nits, the the, the numbers here, <laughs> the nips. <laughs> <laughs> so where did I say? Freud Ro- is alive and well on this podcast. So I said uh, Scooter Gilbert came in at 11th all-time with hits. Yes. At, at 193. Mm-hmm. Coming in at 10th all-time with 194 hits. Oof. Ryan say it to my face, Fisher. How fitting is that that those two guys are one hit apart from each other? That's nuts. I, I feel like we're going to get some phone calls and like, dude, I'll come in one more game and like kind of, you That's know. right. He should be there, man. But you know say it to my face, Fisher actually is in Ohio again. He's back. He's I back, know. man. That's not that bad of a drive. It's not that bad. You could, dude, I've done it multiple times. Tenth all time with runs at 163, 548 career batting average. Solid, man. So, so actually, just uh, the backstory. Where, where did all these guys come from? Ryan Fisher, man. Um, back in 2012, uh, the g- general manager for the good guys, we were one short. We knew that coming into the season. We knew needed a new player. Um, so, general manager reached out and looked around on the internets, which is obviously the place to go in 2012. Found this guy on there, and uh, he was going to show up. Funny story about this. I was at work the day before our first game, and I said, yeah, I got this guy, new guy we're playing ball with tonight. And the guy at work says, what's his name? And I said, Ryan Fisher. And he says, yeah, I know Ryan Fisher. I'm like, uh, I don't know if it's the same guy. You know, Ryan Fisher is uh, probably and obviously a very common name. And uh, he says, well, this Ryan Fisher was a softball player. And I thought, okay, oh, all right, well, yeah. okay. So he showed me a picture of this guy, and he's a bigger boy, and uh, it looked like he could really swing a bat. So I thought, okay, maybe that's him. And I was kind of happy about it. I'm like, there he goes. I got a nice big hitter now out of this. So then uh, game night rolls up, and uh, here comes this uh, this scrawny guy. It was the best hair I've ever seen. And he comes walking up, and I'm like, oh, he's probably from the other team. You know, he had this weird, like, number nine jersey on. And he says, hey, man, my name's Ryan Fisher. And I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> 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 like, all right, man. All right, well, you're playing right Are center. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? No, you're not. And uh, so he goes out and plays right center field and proceeds to play some of the, the best outfield we've seen with yeah. the good guys and uh, made himself a very regular person uh, on the good guys team for the next number of years. So excellent pickup. Um, you know, I was I was a little bit disappointed at first to see that, you know, 130-pound man walk up, but 
there he was, and uh, you know, his, the hair itself would make Samson jealous, I'll tell you that. Um, not a power hitter, but the dude would just paint the line in right field every time. So He was the best slap hitter. He, ever. Was. he was. Oh, fantastic. man. Clean yeah. singles, doubles, knocking some triples in there. Um, his career on base percentage is uh, is fourth all time at wow. 588. That says something, man. On base percentage is really something. And uh, it, imp- it implies he might have had some walks, but not, not a lot. So, so name not a lot. No, not even not close to some of the numbers no, no, we've seen. Yeah, we've seen. Yeah. So, so but hey, then, man, nice try. So Ryan Fisher. I mean, your th- your thoughts with Ryan Fisher? I think obviously some great numbers here, um, some good memories. There was a uh, actually Ryan made when we started Good Guys Video yeah. on the field video. He made the number one catch of the 2013 season, the number one play. Um, so just another thought memory there. So lots of lots of good things behind. Uh, Ryan's time with the with the good guys. Uh, yeah, I would I would say, and I think this is true in any sport or uh, but baseball in particular. The defense is underrated, and while I think his offensive stats certainly speak volumes, it, the glove was my favorite part of him because it's kind of like this other guy we had in left center field where shit like this, that's where the balls went to die is Ryan Fisher land, and. You know, that's where doubles went to die. Is that what he said in Bull Durham? No, it wasn't Bull Durham. It was yeah, yeah. Uh, Field Dreams. Yeah. Field, yeah, Field Dreams. And I just loved watching those. I will still go back. I'm not kidding. I will go back on a random night when I haven't been drinking at all and watch that diving catch from 2013. Oh, yeah. That's just a beautiful thing. Don't wink at him, kid. That was from Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll put your eye out. That's that's Christmas Story. Anyways. <laughs> uh, next on the list is... Whoa, uh, Christmas Story also... Took place in Cleveland, filmed in Cleveland. Ryan Fisher's from Cleveland. How about that? I know. How about See? that? Way to tie it all together. Full circle. All right. Next one. Yes. Let's go back to the list. <laughs> Randall back, to be specific. <laughs> uh, Randall back in 2017 burst onto the scene. Um, just piss missiles Hulk, out of the gate. Hulk like. Hulk like. Uh, I'll tell you, this guy actually came over and helped me move that entire play set over there. Um, basically by himself, just kind of lifted it up and moved it wherever he wanted to. And then you came out of the house and said, hey, good job. That's right. <laughs> he, uh, he's, he moved to Vegas to pursue his, uh, his career in supplement sales, which tells you all you need to know about him. And uh, Randall back. I mean, great dude. Um, I got to say, I always had this feeling in the back of my mind, I don't know if I might say something wrong after I've had a beer or two, and he's just going to punch my face in. And I just always had that fear in the back of my head. And I always got that out of Randall. Like, I'm just a little bit afraid of this guy. At the same time, great dude. Great dude. Um, I couldn't pick like... a better ride o- over to the park even sometimes. <laughs> I feel Weird like... thing. He lived right here next to me. And how, how crazy is that? That was really something, too. Well, especially when people know the story of how you picked him up. Well. In, in a dress on 4th Street. But was... for the softball team, you picked him up by... I said that before we started recording. Which means it hasn't been recorded. I that all this out, and I hope I don't forget later. Okay. <laughs> I, At any rate, it was amazing. Name one other person that hit better, harder, faster, lower line drive piss missiles than Randall Back. I feel like the person that <clears throat> comes closest might be Hall of Famer, notably here, mm-hmm. Serge Howard. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. You know what? Kind of a different style, but still. Yes, absolutely. No, Serge, the way Serge, his swing would come down on a ball he'd hit it like a golfer off his back foot while the, so the bat is still coming down on the ball and the consequence would be this piss missile right up the middle and i swear one day he about killed somebody there was a shortstop playing kind of middle depth so he should have plenty of time to field a ball that ball was past him before the guy's glove came off his knee if it would have been center mass would have probably killed the guy Instant Hall of Fame vote if you kill somebody on the field. Wow. If they have life flight. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why Daniel Bowling was getting in. Okay. And the Hall of Fame. Um, the next person on the list. So, so again, Randall back. Piss missiles to galore. But uh, only one season with the good guys. So I think the uh, committee's probably going to frown on the fact that he only had, what, uh, like 74 or 70-something plate appearances career-wise. So... And we'll, we'll see how that goes. He also comes, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> if I'm doing the math correctly, fourth or possibly fifth in 
number of songs written about him. Ooh, you know what? That's probably right. And that's a thing. I mean, you don't just write a song for some schlep. Speaking of schlep, we, so we next made, on the list is Dan, Dennis Carr, actually, here. so We made his wife cry. I feel like that was a good thing. Do you remember <laughs> that? We did make his wife cry. Yeah. Back on Randall still. Yeah. Oh, Mikey Back was on. her name. Back yeah. on Randall. Yeah. It was Mikey. I, I, always, I miss Mikey as well. I don't know. Do you miss Mikey more or do you miss Randall more? Mikey was a great off-the-field character. I think Dallas... Dude, dude, uh, don't, don't. We're not supposed to talk about that. Not off the field? Yeah. Not, okay. Not off the field. Okay, well, we have to... They were both awesome. We're going to have to edit this also. <laughs> All right, Dennis Carr. Uh, 100 career plate appearances. Um, 40 hits. And he's an intellectual. Three doubles. Two home runs. He's a libertarian. Libertarian, sorry. My bad. <laughs> he may be short, but the man's fully grown. <laughs> Old nutcap. I, you know, this guy here, he's one of my favorites all time. I'll tell you that. D-Cup. D-Cup, yes. D-Cup. This guy, man, I tell you what. Speaking of... You know, maybe only Randall Back has had more more songs written about a guy who was with the group for so short a time. Um, I yeah, remember a song per some, month. Yeah, some good outfield from Dennis. Again, I don't know. the The committee's going to look at this and say oh, he wasn't with the team that long, but he was. His time was memorable, 2014 to 2016, uh, largely. Maybe some games outside of that as well. Uh, but Dennis Carr. Yeah. Uh, and I would also add, like, <clears throat> and I think we've kind of skipped this on some of the other guys. So if if you if you're listening to this and your initials start with A and end in damn casting, um, and we don't say that it's just because I forgot. <laughs> um, Dennis Carr was a funny dude, and he brought a lot of like entertainment into the dugout. Oh yeah. And I think we're kind of overlooking that for some of these other people we have we talked could about go them. back and rank these guys like a one out of ten in that and. They're all high rankings, I think. That's, Ryan, that's... Ryan was too quiet. He mostly was a, it was fodder for conversation. Um, for pictures than... of him being sliding in the third base and being tagged out. Yeah, when there's the, that. When the, the tag is several yeah. feet from the base. <clears throat> Caston was great in the dugout. Danimal was just he could we could write Jesus. books about Danimal. Jesus. Um, Scooter, again, kind of quiet in the dugout, but again, plenty of fodder for him there. Um, Randall back was anything but quiet. Dennis, excellent in the dugout. And then the last man here. This guy started with the good guys in 2005, the original softball good guys. Then he disappeared for a short time. We're not really sure what happened. Legend has it that he made a run for the border of the north. Um, he came back with the team in 2015, played off and on um, into 2017. 221 total plate appearances. 64 career hits, and who doesn't love the better Breen, Alan Breen? Jim. Oh, Jim doesn't. Yeah, no. well, we know that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Damn it, Alan. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like we can go ahead and say whatever we want about him because he's not going to hear this podcast <laughs> anyways. Um, this podcast being offered in Braille. Yeah. Closed caption for the Alan Closed Breen Affair. Closed caption for... Closed caption's been sponsored by... <laughs> uh, uh, the the nipple piercing place down the street. Oh I my imagine. gosh! I, you know what, Alan? I, your nipples scare me. Ever bro. since uh, ever since we used to play football on uh -huh. Sundays out at mom and dad's house, I've never thought of Mike and Ike's the same. <laughs> oh God! Ew! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Funny story about Alan. I don't know if I should tell this or not. Go. He's not. Okay. He's not. What is he going to so, do? Yellow so shirt? we were. We're. This is a, one of the the random Sundays we were playing football out at mom and dad's house, and uh, I think back to this day often, and I, it stirs feelings in me that I don't know. I'm a little bit confused about. Um, so random Sunday out at mom and dad's house, and you know the same old same old group is there. It's me. It's Ben. It's uh, Jeremy Stewart. Jerry Potter, Jim Breen, and Alan Breen. Um, and I think that was the general group. Daniel played a lot Daniel with us out there say. as well. So we've played a game or three, and we're all exhausted because it's hot. It's a hot September day. It's probably 85 degrees. We're out there kind of laying on the grass and taking a break. And I get up, and I'm like, come on, guys, let's play another game um, in just a second. Yes. Um, let me finish the damn story. Can I have this? Yes, that's yours. That's yes, I'm sorry. You have to. That's not a pop top. That's not a pop. Or it is a pop top. It's not a twisty. Okay. Uh, here. 
Sorry, I'm I'm interrupt. Story, so sorry. I have to go back and fix all this now. Damn it. Damn it. I'm sorry, man. Um, so, so, we're, for, so we're laying on the grass there, and it's hot, and everyone's taking a break. And I get up, and I'm like, come on, guys, let's go. Let's play another game. Let's get ready. And Alan and most of us out there are wearing the same thing. It's just a T-shirt, a tattered old T-shirt. Side note, I had the same T-shirt I wore like every Sunday, and it always got ripped, and I always sewed it back up. So I had this shirt that was in tatters that had these like shitty patch jobs was it, sewn together. Was it a Barry Sanders jersey? Uh, no, I wish. You know, okay. I, I played like Barry Sanders <laughs> back then. Uh, so so anyway, I'm wearing this tattered T-shirt and the mesh shorts. You know, that's what we all uh, kind of wear we're out there. So I kind of walk around and everyone's laying on their backs. And Alan specifically is laying on his back. Let me paint the picture for you. He's laying on his back. He's got his hands over his head, kind of covering his, his forehead and his eyes. And just lay in there, and his his feet are up, his knees are up in the air, and his his heels are kind of pushed back a little bit, so his knees are up in the air. And I walk around, and Alan's not wearing any underwear. And I realize this, I'm kind of looking down, I'm like, hey guys, let's start playing. What the fuck, Alan? Are you serious? <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm like, Alan's showing his, his big old dick hanging out right there, showing everybody to see it. And I mean, I'm not ashamed to admit it. It was it was big. I mean, I was like, it stirred some feeling. I thought, man, damn, Alan, it's swinging a hammer down there. And uh, I just thought, you know, I think, you know, I'm I'm all for free balling too. I'm all for free balling. Don't get me wrong. It's freeing. It's a great feeling. Liberating. But man. when you're playing a game of football, tackle football with a bunch of other dudes, I don't think that's an appropriate time to free ball. And I'd like to get your thoughts on this because I I just I've thought about it a lot ever since. And there's a lot of times that, you know, you're tackling people, shorts could come down, and it's going to be very obvious very quickly that you're down there free balling. And this going with the guy, this is pre-nip piercings, pre-nip <clears throat> piercings, but still a weird thing to do. And I, I, know I haven't really ever forgiven Alan for that, so I guess after all these years I can't really hold a grudge. I think I'm ready to step out and say I'm sorry and I forgive him for that. But um, it was an odd day. It was an odd day. And you have these images that just burn in your mind. Oh, yeah. And I, now mine is looking at Allen not wearing any fucking underwear, playing tackle football with a bunch of other dudes. So I know I, this I, is supposed to be a Hall of Fame conversation, <laughs> but this is more what we need to hit on, the hard-hitting subjects around some of these guys. Your thoughts, go. I, I feel like he would have been at least twice as fast if he could have, like, strapped himself down. So <laughs> he did nothing but hurt him damn, his damn self. <laughs> on the flip side, you're going to tackle him, and, it, you, you know, it, it counts as a knee down. He, he could tripod and completely pivot back up without his knee ever touching. That's that's true. <laughs> that's um, very true. Yeah. Also, though, I think he's a little bit ahead of his time, because I'm not mistaken. Uh, Gio Bernard, Giovanni Bernard, also doesn't wear anything underneath his trousers when he's playing for the Bengals. That's really interesting. I had no idea. Not well, you never picked him up off the ground when you're playing tackle football in your mom's backyard, have you? <laughs> That's true. Gio I has have not done that. So <laughs> yeah, oh, interesting. Okay. So finally, I would also say that if I had that piece of information, I would immediately make sure that I was on the opposing team and guarding him. <laughs> you know, so what? I would. Try drop drow on him and like say run my friend go. <laughs> I don't know honestly what I did the rest of the day or the following six months after that because I think that that moment really changed my life in such an extreme way that the next team time I was conscious of what was going on, I was like graduated and like moving out and everything else. So it was a very very strange time. What a strange day. But you know what? It's one of my great many many fond memories of Alan. Yeah. The ball's in your glove, dude. I thought I was going to hit it over the tweeze. <laughs> Lots of great Alan Breen quotables there. And uh, I don't know. Just quotables alone get you into the Hall of Fame. Wow. Uh, if they do, then he's the man. He is the Carl Yastrzemski of quotables for the Hall of Fame. Free ball quotes. Yeah. Uh-oh. So. We got company. Pause. Well, Coach and... Joe, we're taking a quick break from the podcast here to get everything plugged back in. How about a little plug of my own? Uh, Good Guys Party, November 2nd, Saturday, November 2nd, at the House of Can of Corn. Be passing out into the year awards, uh, singing some songs, uh, maybe swinging the bat a little bit. It's going to be fantastic. Make sure you're here for that. November 2nd, Saturday, November 2nd. Let's get back to the podcast. Okay, after the uh, the brief 
halt there we just had um don't want to point fingers but you know someone's child kicked a cord out of the wall uh, put us into darkness here it was almost a disaster i'll tell you that i uh the <clears throat> kids will be kids you gotta blame the guy who doesn't get a battery for his damn computer no well, kids will be kids and that's why you're supposed to swat children for things minor things um, when they get, like when they get close to your computer yeah is this one yeah this looks good no, cool. All right. okay so here we go let's launch it let's let's wrap up the, the hall of fame talk class of 2019 um, we talked about a lot of great people here, individuals. Your thoughts, again, you don't have to share your vote. You can share your vote because you do definitely get a vote. What are your thoughts? So how many of these guys actually yeah, get into the hall? That's what it is because I'm not going to name names because I don't do that. But statistically, looking at it, there are um, 1.74 new members will be added to the Hall of Fame this year. That's, that's Those are the odds. Is the .74 like another piece of equipment? <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be an entire entity. Mm. I'm taking that into account. All right. So, yeah. So, what I'm saying is is there's somewhere between, there's more likelihood of, there's slightly more likelihood of the number of people being inducted this year being two than of one. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So, seven Hall of Fame committee members five votes required to get into the Hall of Fame. So five out of seven have got to consider. Or one strategically placed BJ. Wow, that's the damn truth. <laughs> Let's not so, get into that. So, so, so there you go. It's a family show. Kind of, Although I, well, it was originally it was until I started talking about Alan's penis. And I think he used the F word a couple of times. So we'll have to make sure we put a disclaimer on here to not let just anyone listen to this, I guess. I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's a family show if the family's Helen Breen's family. Well, Mom's not going to listen to this. It's way too long. So I'm sorry. Much like Alan and his big old hammer. <laughs> Alan, you're welcome. I don't even know. Yeah, they should. I don't know who's to say if that's even true or not, but I'm just throwing it out there in case you're doing a little bit of light internet dating down the road. I know you're happy now, but just thank me later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so let's move on to the the, the oh, okay. So Hall of Fame talk is over. We'll we'll reveal well, at the uh, yeah. Say, say, we, the... we make the reveal at the big uh, postseason party this year, hosted by Nick uh, P. Is that for sure? Well, I don't know. I just made it up last week. And I said either Nick P. or you are hosting it, and no one said anything since. So he, he showed me a ten percent finished pole barn. Well, there's that. That's not. I don't like those odds. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, did so Alan, you're hosting the so party. So did Alan Breen, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pole barn. <laughs> so, so we'll do that at the uh, Good Guys postseason party. So let's move on to another topic, 2020 Good Guys. And what's going to happen with the 2020 Good Guys? So so what we've come across now is, uh, is a franchise that's uh, defunct when it comes to the roster. We've got people who don't show up, people who don't tell you that they're not going to show up. You find strangers. We tried fitting in with uh, with Scott Rowland, who ended up being really, really douchey, and we didn't want to bring that back in again. You think he listens to this stuff even after he's been booted and he doesn't? He's listening for his name. He might be. He might just scan the webs for Scott Rowland, even though that's not even his real name. Um, hold on a second. There's someone else going to come up. Don't kick this cord, okay? If you walk up. Okay. Doing a podcast. You want to be a part of it? Damn it. She's not even going to listen anyway, to it. Anyway, hey, where were we? Good guys, 2020. Hey, and we're back. We're back. <laughs> so, horse shit aside. With, um, with Fred. With and Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We know. We don't mess around. Hey. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we're considerably deeper into this six-pack than we were before. Um, well, we had, we, you missed. We did not record. We had some good Joanna stories. I don't think uh, there's think such a thing. Paused. Pause. We're going to get it again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they're not getting? Those effing brownies, man. Oh, they're doing great, man. After beating the Jets, they'll be fine. Ah. Uh, so 2020 good guys. You know, we talked about this briefly a moment ago, and then we got cut off, and I don't know where the hell we're at now. This is editing people are going to have so much work to do at this point. But 2020 good guys. So as we get through the 2019 season, um, you as uh, coach of the good guys and, and now general manager of the good guys and you just 
uh, I've been tasked with the impossible job of maintaining uh, 10 guys on the field week in, week out. It's been very, very difficult. We've had, uh, I know Sticks has not been at, but what, two games this year? Three games tops? Three, um, three or four, maybe. Okay, I've, I've missed at least half of them. But, oh, um, it seems like we got Matt G back for a couple Matt of years. Matt G was, was back. Cool. That was excellent. I love having the emergence, reemergence of Matt G. It's been excellent. Uh, side, side comment, was he ever in the Hall of Fame voting? You know, actually, I think I have uh, looked at it. I had him set for next year. So, Matt G, 2020 Good Guy Hall of Fame class, Good Guy Hall of Fame nominee potential. Well, there. I feel like he just blew that because he played a couple games. No, well, you got to play enough. You have to play enough. Okay. Did he really play enough? How many games did he play this year? Uh, two. Two. I don't know if two's enough. But he came to four. He came a lot more than that. Did he really? <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> so I don't know how many he played uh, or was present for. Yeah. Uh, come here often? Not as often as I'd like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so... <laughs> so, Matt G aside now, uh, so... so you got uh, you've had to fill in with quite a crew this year. You got Austin, some young guy, has mm-hmm. uh, stepped up. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, far, uh, 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 Scott Rowland has come and then gone. Um, who else you got right now? Well, Chase was come and gone. Bill has come and might stay, and he's a pretty good addition. Oh yeah, I forgot about Bill. He wasn't there the last game. No, he he hurt himself his knee. Pretty decently. I think he's going to be able to recover without surgery, but he uh, he twonked it pretty unpleasantly. Um, then we had like half of four different teams fill into The us. guilt trip worked. The brownies are here. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Oh. I don't know that that's a good trade. Thank you. You're amazing. There's not enough brownies for that. They're small. <laughs> wow! Thank you. Thank what about you. what about brownies for him? Yeah, where are mine? We tried. She, she thinks brownies are gonna make everything better. Hmm. So anyway, I can make my dick bigger. Who <laughs> needs some out some brownies? Alan Breen. So anyways, what are you what are your thoughts here? Those, those brownies are coming nuts. <laughs> Finishing the 2019 season, what are your concerns, thoughts about the roster? Are you going to have enough to finish this year? Let's start there. Okay, yes. So we got two guys who are excited to come out. And that's a, that's a good thing. One of them is uh, Sean Lang. Sean is Farney's brother-in-law. Brother to his wife, which is what brother-in-law means. Uh, Lisa Lang Heineke. I'm, I've known Sean pretty much not at all. Oh, yeah. Um, Great. But, no, I've, I've met him back when, when Lisa and, and Matt were dating. And I've had maybe three or four encounters with him in my lifetime, but all of them were super fun. So he's going to play right center field for us uh, in the fall season, and we'll, we'll see where that goes. But Sean's uh, – Sean, I don't know about his ball skills, but uh, in terms of, like, Fun, fun guy. I think he, he comes, he comes well recommended. And then Jake D is uh, Sean's friend from softball. And this isn't the same Jake we had a long time ago, is it? Your brother? No, we had another Jake. No, his name was Jerry, and that was your damn fault. He's dead. <laughs> and he's dead, right? How dare you, Jerry? Uh, no, damn it. Jake D is going to be playing catcher for us, and he also is excited to be there. I have no idea what kind of bats they swing. But, you know, you do what you can in these situations, but they seem like decent guys. I feel like we had another Jake on the team not so long ago, but I don't remember who he came with and, and, and who brought him also. Jake. Jake Farrell. Farrell, that's the guy. Yeah, he, you were the I guy. With, yeah, yeah, okay, he's your Jake. Yeah. Yeah, you no, know, he's uh, he hasn't played for us for years. Yeah, he's dead By now. years, I mean like six or seven. It's been that long. It is indeed because he's taught where he's teaching now for four years. What's he doing these days? He is a middle school science teacher. I mean, like with his softball career. Oh, it's on ice. Oh, ouch. Oh, no. 
So is everyone else on the good guys, but we're still playing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, yeah. So, so okay. So, thoughts moving into 2020. Is this is this your build up to 2020? Do you think getting into the 2020 season, these guys are going to fill the void, fill the gap uh, for the the good guys roster? I really, I haven't the faintest clue. I really don't. We're gonna have to. Have I have to sit down and think about this and evaluate things and stuff like that. Maybe at a, a winter sausage fest, that would be a, a, a meeting. Um, but I don't know because it's the one. Th the, 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 the thing I hate second most in all of softball is scrambling to pick up guys. That's just like if you got ten guys that show up every week and they're not like Nazis, then you're it's a good time. But. And the second worst thing about softball is, is trying to pick up guys. And the first worst thing about softball is line drives up the middle. I, mean, I think picking up guys is something you've always been good at. Well, yeah, but not for softball. <laughs> for hardball, it's a different story. So, you know, some people might look at it and say, you know, picking up all these random people, is this really going to be good for the Good Guys franchise? We've always been a very tight-knit, close group. Um, but then again, you look through the years, and we talked a little bit earlier about the pickup of Ryan Fisher... Uh, Daniel Detweiler, Adam Kasson, all guys that are now on the Hall of Fame ballot. Um, those guys were relatively unknown. Uh, look at uh, Rob Cubs Hat Kokel. Gosh, when he came into the league, he was still wet behind the ears, and uh, Andy was young, and uh, you know nobody really knew him very well. I just knew that he was still like young enough to be impressed with the fact that like we were all drinking beer, you know, and that was a cool thing for him. Uh, I think he had just got his license back then. Was he 17, I think, maybe? Oh, I thought he meant his gynecological license. Yeah, he's still practicing? Yeah. <laughs> um, he, he still isn't good. He's still to practice. <laughs> but, but, I mean, my point here is that, uh, of course, it's always kind of a strange thing to adopt in new good guys. But at the same time, um, historically, that's what this franchise has been all about, is adopting new people and uh, making them and morphing them into good guys of their own regard and, and turning them into that. I think, um, does anyone epitomize that more so than Austin, some young guy this year? Well, if you sent the benchmark like that, then no. Wow. <laughs> so here's the thing that I think is, is a difference. This is a, a weird thing here. In the past, there has been a core of good guys that has been pretty much unchanged and then there's like like five or six of those, and then the the, the the three or four other spots rotate. Like we met Ryan, and when well, I, I'm trying to like remember exact turnovers here, but when one of those three or four would go, somebody else would fill in those three or four spots. But the core five or six remain. But that's the part that's that's fundamentally changed at this point. There's only one original good guy left on the team now, which is which is like a difference in years past. And I don't know. If and that's know. a Breen. No, it isn't. Oh, which one are you talking about? Me. Oh, original good. Wait a minute. Wait, what? I'm thinking 2005 original good guys. You're thinking even earlier than that. Yes. 2003 good guys. Yes. Good for you. Well, what about Jim Breen? He's still there. That's, oh, yeah. You're not going to count Jim Breen because well, I'm going to count him, but it's a it's a. It's, oh, is it? I'm not good at accounting. Is that a debit or a debit? That's yeah, so deb he, no, that's the, that's the butt. Yeah, he's the butt. <laughs> <laughs> His brother's the other end. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so okay, Jimmy, we'll give it to you. Um, but that's the weird part. Then I suppose on one level, it's cool, like you know, go out and meet new people and stuff like that. But on the other level, it's like we got into this gig for the people that were there in the first place. So I don't know. I what do you do with that? At this point in your life, don't you feel like you've met enough new people? Like, and you're so sick of meeting people, and you hate people. And, uh, and it's not that you don't really like getting along with people and talking to them. You just don't like knowing them or like conversing with them. Or making eye contact. Or even eye contact is yeah, sometimes yeah, difficult. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that explains the setup I have down in my basement. Yeah, well, okay. Well, and that's another time for another night, but... Um, I, I find myself pulling less punches with some of these people nowadays, um, whereas I used to, like, turn around and yell the stuff in my glove, like, oh, hit the damn cutoff. Now I openly turn to them and say, hey, hit the freaking cutoff next time. 
You're an idiot. Ben Greeson. <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't had a chance to apologize for him too much this year on the field, but um, I think uh, between the two of us, we, and I've been there a few times, he's been there a few times, we've shared the field for one game this year, I believe. Yeah. That was it. And, and that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Why, here's the question. Why do you go to play softball? Is it to win a game? <laughs> You're on the wrong team. <laughs> Is it to go out and have a beer? Then you're in the right ballpark, as it were, metaphor. Uh, but is it if it's to see like the people you've been seeing for the past eight, nine, ten years? That's that's happening less, and so the it question is. is, does that make a difference? Yeah. Or to what degree does it make a difference? Blah blah blah. Understood. Because because at the same time, I mean like, um, uh, Robbie and P and Ray Ray starting to come out more, and that's a really cool sign. But at the same time, like you, you intentionally like. I'm there because these are the guys that I want to hang out with. And, yeah. And they're, you know. Well, and I like Ray Ray. I really, I like Ray Ray. Yeah. I mean, he's, um, of all the people that played left field last week, he's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, That's smooth. He's got a very, like, Matt G-like uh, traits about him. You know, he's, he carries himself the same way as and Matt he can, I almost expect him to walk up carrying a bowling bag wearing golf spikes and to roll up uh, some uh, some tobacco in a pipe. Like, that's what I expect out of Ray Ray because he reminds me that much of Matt G. Yeah, and, and now he's trying to be a police officer. So he, I've heard that. He's a cross between odd. Matt G and Scooter, which I think the overlap of the whole universe is one person and it's Ray Ray. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I've not seen, you know what I miss out of Ray Ray is I've not seen any emotional outbursts out of Ray Ray yet. No, I don't think you are. I, I saw him. see that. I saw him one night. The closest I ever saw is one night he had he had, had more beer than I've ever seen him have because he doesn't usually drink a whole lot of beer, which is super unfortunate because there was a woman sitting across from him that he was really hoping to impress, and had he done so, it was like the table was set. It was kind of like maybe possible it was going to happen. Really? And I won't mention her name in case she listens to this podcast, but um, her, her initials were Courtney Irvin. and. <laughs> <laughs> So and, and, and she, just, pri- she was primed to... and ready for Ray Ray that time. I don't know, primed and ready, but she was like, maybe. Like desperate. Yeah, I get it. Like <laughs> and he he made a horrific first impression. Yeah. And I was like, dude, the one night you go can get messed up. Anyways, do me a favor. you got to edit that out. That's I'm not going to. I think that's perfect fodder for this. And the only person that's going to hear it and laugh about it is Cubs hat and like sticks or somebody. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, Courtney's like really half engaged now, so it's okay, I guess. All right, then who cares then? What and, she he's, and he's Canadian. He's in Toronto. Oh, so Ray Ray? Oh, no. I don't know. That changes everything. Chris. He's off the team. <laughs> oh, Chris. Okay. That's I don't Courtney's, know who that guy is. That's Courtney's. All right. Well, yeah. whatever. And yeah. Chris isn't playing with this anyway. Well, if he does, we'll ask him for some maple syrup. He's in a hockey league. Well, no shit. He's Canadian. <laughs> Everyone in Canada is in oh, but I hockey like leagues. It's a stereotype, but it's actually really true. They actually do play hockey. I know. Hockey I, the, la- the only Canadian person I know, said, the last email I got from him, says, Hey, man, I got that maple syrup for you. I got it from a guy I play hockey with. I'll bring it to you next time I see you. Fuck you. Ah. Yeah. So this has been uh, That's a detour. long yeah, exactly. and event uneventful. So, um, Ray Ray, we like you. And? Yeah, if Ray Ray made it all the way to the end of this podcast just to hear our feelings about him, then, I mean, good for him Power anyway. And, Ray, we'll help your game for next time also. Uh, and JV will hopefully prep you a little bit better than telling you when it's too late. Yeah, that was partially me. The pump was primed, so to speak. and He showed up. He showed up like... That's bad. Yeah, yeah. I just I've never now. seen that before, and then there it was. Like shit. Like all Timing. of a, like <laughs> all of a sudden, I uh, I feel like the most important thing in my life is now to get Ray Ray laid, and we'll start wow. working on that next week. Wow. Uh, so we play. Don't play Corec. All right. So he's gonna have to change his orientation. Well, if someone. <laughs> We want to get him hooked up with someone who can swing a big stick. Maybe uh, Ooh. we can work on that. Ooh, I got a, I got a candidate. Do you? Yeah. All Alex, right. Yeah, he's a former good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps even on the 2019 Hall of Fame ballot. Could be. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, this has does, been excellent. Does, does Ray like to camp, go camping? You I know feel what? like Ellen Breen can pitch a tent. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't uh, Ray Ray catch for a short period of time there? Oh, he, he was. Not even a short period of time. I say a medium period. All right, and Allen caught. Yeah, but neither one of them pitched. Ooh. You know what? There's a first time for everything. Yeah. 
Let one pitch, like when you get one those catch. Lego bricks that don't go together, and you're like, damn, what if I can... You can force those together, though. Uh, you got to buy them dinner first. All right. Well, this has been great. We're going to cut it off at that. Um, I wish we had a better way to end this. Um, but uh, what's the difference between a good podcast and a bad podcast timing? <laughs> it's still recording, isn't it? Yes, it is. We're... <laughs> <laughs> and... Makes it a bad podcast. Oh. <laughs>